Right, as we get set up for our next finalist presentation, uh, I'd like to bring our other honorary judge up, astronaut Abby, come up here and join me. How are you? I'm great. Is there any other way to be at the Young Scientist Challenge? I, it is a pretty enlightening, inspiring <laughs> place, right? So tell Absolutely. us over the last uh, day or two, you know, tell us about your experience here. What have you taken away working with uh, seeing the Young Scientist? Just general reactions. I have to say that I'm blown away because I knew when I was coming into this that we had a group of amazing, intelligent, visionary young people who are doing this. But knowing that and experiencing it is a different thing. So really getting to see them work firsthand has blown my mind. Uh, and it's also kind of uncomfortably taking me back to middle school years. So, because for me that was not too long ago. And so it's a mixed, mixed feelings there. For those of you that, and I know, I mean, so, Abby has millions of followers on uh, social media. If you haven't seen her TED Talk, it's something uh, during the break after to, to check out. Just give everybody, just tell them your quick story about uh, the whole astronaut Abby thing. Yeah, great. So I've wanted to be an astronaut, honestly, as long as I can remember. And that turned into this whole astronaut Abby thing uh, when I was about 13 years old and I set up a Twitter account and I realized that we have a voice in, in social media. We have a voice using new media. And I decided to use mine to advocate for STEM education and space exploration. And so since then, I've been sharing everything that I've been doing towards reaching that goal and whatnot online. Uh, and most importantly, I started the Mars Generation nonprofit, which I would recommend you all go check out. Um, there's a scholarship there right now, right? Or there's a scholarship program or something on the Mars Generation? Yeah, so one of the fact, one of the portions or programs in the Mars Generation is that we offer a space camp scholarship for students living at or below the national poverty line to go on full paid trips to space camp in Huntsville. We're sending 16 students this year, which is a full space camp team, and it just opened. So if you, anyone here, or uh, you know anyone who would be interested in that, encourage them to go to themarsgeneration.org, and um, it's pretty apparent once you get there how to find the scholarship page. We definitely want to see those applications. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you for joining us. All right. So we having a good time? It's impressive, right? So for those of you that are following along on the web, thank you so much. A lot of uh, family members, classes, watching around the world. Uh, let's get to our next Young Scientist finalist presentation. Uh, our next Young Scientist comes from Broomfield, Colorado. Uh, let's meet my friend, Catherine. <laughs> How are you, dear? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Feeling good? Yes. Right. I'm going to give that to you and get out of your way. Have fun, Great. all right? Thank you. One in nine people on Earth do not have access to clean water. That's no water to drink, none to cook with, and none to bathe with. The water crisis is a rapidly growing problem for many people across the world. On the other hand, in the US, the average American family uses 300 gallons of water a day. And one of the biggest wastes of water are lawns. Daily, in the US alone, over 13 million gallons of water are used on grass, and much of that water is wasted simply due to overwatering. It is vital that we find a simple way to cut down on our waste of water before it's too late. To combat the problem of blatant water waste on lawns in the US, I designed a robot that monitors how much water a lawn is receiving, LawnBot. I hypothesized that through the utilization of robotic movement, I could create a more efficient soil moisture sensor than the sensors of today. Throughout my entire project, I kept four criteria in mind. I wanted my robot to be under $115, eco-friendly, efficient, and accurate. LawnBot, shown here, drives around your lawn, collects soil moisture and temperature data, and reports it back to the user. My solution is unique because there are no soil moisture sensors on the market today tailored to lawns. Furthermore, current soil moisture sensors are expensive. They can start at about $70 per Bluetooth Lynx probe, and getting an accurate idea of soil moisture levels takes multiple probes. My solution is both more efficient and more cost effective. There are two major parts to my design. The first is the robot body itself, which went through three different phases of prototyping this summer. In phase one, I started with Lego NXT robot, parts and wheels in a large container. This robot was bulky, had a hard time moving through the grass, and was not very customizable. 
In phase two, I aim to move away from LEGO to create a more realistic prototype. I created four different phase two prototypes that all had similar successes and failures. They were all consisted of a homemade chassis with a variety of different wheels and structures, as well as an Arduino board that I coded. However, these prototypes were even more unstable than my first prototype because they were homemade and the adhesives I used were not strong enough to hold them together. In phase three, I not only made my robot more structurally sound, I also added some key features that improves the functionality of my robot. To make my robot more structurally sound, I based it on a robotic chassis kit, then modified it to fit my needs. I also used the 3M Scotch Weld, Weld Instant Adhesive to hold everything together. To finish it off, I included a servo motor to control my robotic arm, as there wasn't an arm in phase two, as well as a solar panel to make my design eco-friendly, meeting one of my criteria. The second major part of my design is my soil moisture sensor. My soil moisture sensor is based off of a voltage dividing circuit and measures resistance between two probes, in this case, nails. My robot pushes the nails into the ground opposite each other and a five volt current is sent from one nail to the other. My robot then uses the calculation of V out, voltage out equals voltage in times the resistance of the second resistor over the resistance of the resistors combined to find that unknown resistance. This formula is based off of Ohm's law and is the simplest way to measure an unknown resistance. My robot then takes that resistant measurement and converts it into a soil moisture measurement. The more water, the less resistance. I conducted both controlled and uncontrolled trials with my sensor to test in a variety of different environments. In my controlled trials, my goal was to get the ideal amount of water for a lawn that has just been watered, or 30% water to 70% soil, to register at 2.5 out of a possible five volts that my sensor was calibrated to the needs of grass. My results are shown here. In the end, I concluded that a circuit with a 3100 ohm resistor and two inch steel nails worked the best. I then conducted uncontrolled trials over the course of a week in three different lawns and concluded that my sensor worked in uncontrolled environments as well as controlled ones. The data for one of my lawns is shown here. After completing my uncontrolled trials, I also added a couple of different features to improve the functionality of my robot, including a Bluetooth module and a temperature sensor as I learned that temperature had an effect on the resistance that my robot read. This is the final schematic of the wiring of my design. This all fits under the top of my robot and in future models will be even more contained. After completing my project, I looked into some possible further application opportunities. For example, agriculture is by far the largest consumer of Earth's water, accounting for about 60 to 70% of the nation's consumption of fresh water every year. I could easily upscale my design to provide aid to farmers by checking the soil moisture content and even fertilizer and pesticide content of their crops. I could also look into smart home applications, tying my robot directly into sprinkler systems to tell them how much to water, or even tying in with other functions such as security and lights for the user to monitor. We are in the middle of a water crisis. It is vital that we find a simple way to cut down on our waste of water before it's too late, and monitoring water on lawns is a simple and efficient way to do just that. LawnBot is cheaper, more efficient, and more practical than any sensors on the market today, making it the next step towards preserving Earth's scarce, fresh water. Thank you. You've done an outstanding job these last couple days. It's just been an absolute pleasure to watch you, and you have super strong presentation skills, which Thank we you. were all able to witness here today. So I have a relatively mundane question. Mm -hmm. What surprises did you encounter along the way? Oh, well, there were a bunch. Starting into this project, I really didn't have any knowledge of what I was getting into. I hadn't done robotics in the past. This was completely out of my zone. So as I learned about even just like coding on my Arduino board or how different robotic systems work and even different components like resistors and different voltage motors that I didn't know about, I was surprised probably every day by something new that I learned. So great presentation, by the way. It was really thought out and elaborate. So uh, one question I have is about how you're going to scale this up potentially further. So uh, you've tested mainly lawns. So testing going on to different applications, like in the agriculture side, how would you adapt your prototype necessarily? So the biggest adaptation would have to be the power of my prototype to scale it up so that it's able to cover multiple acres instead of just say one in your backyard. So I'd have to look at different ways to power my robot as well as different motors and sets of wheels so that it could be used in agriculture. 
Um, besides that, I could add other functions like chemical tests for those fertilizer and pesticide contents. And I would like to talk with farmers about their take on this to kind of get an idea of where I should go with that and what they need. Abby, thank you for uh, such a wonderful. Sorry. <laughs> Catherine, you're wonderful, this presentation was wonderful, and LawnBot is wonderful, so I have one question for you, which is, when and where can I buy one? <laughs> All right, I'm actually kidding about that, but I do have a question, which is that in Minnesota, we have over 10,000 lakes, and they're very precious to us. Are you aware that a large issue of that is eutrophication or the runoff of waste from fertilizers commonly used on lawns into our lake systems? and what impact do you think that distributing lawn bots to people in watershed areas would have? I think it'll definitely have a big impact. I can look into monitoring fertilizers and pesticides if I decide to go that way in agriculture, and that could tie into lawns as well. But even just eliminating that runoff by keeping appropriate amounts of water on your lawn will really make an impact on what gets into our systems for sure. Thank you, fantastic presentation, and I'll be the number two person to purchase one. I'm putting my order in right now. Uh, so actually, early on in your presentation, you talked about four criteria that were critical for success, and you mentioned eco-friendly, efficient, economical, and under $115. Yes. Could you elaborate a little bit on how you determine those criteria? Yeah, so definitely the eco-friendly one was pretty easy. This entire project is built to save water. And so I wanted to tie into that idea of protecting our environment, so that was definitely something that I wanted to meet. Uh, when it comes to accurate and efficient, those were more criteria of making my design better than the current soil moistures that are on the market today. Um, it had to be more efficient, it had to get to more spots in a less amount of time. Um, and so those two kind of came from that. And then when it came to cost, I want this to be an uh, affordable um, design. I actually did a cost analysis here, and I looked at kind of the different uh, parts of soil moisture sensors today and what each of them are. And in the end, my system is more expensive than current systems. But what I was really concerned about is the capabilities of my system and the fact that it visits many different spots in your lawn. So I wanted to make sure that my system was applicable to large spaces and kept cost effective. Allie, again, thank you for such a fine presentation. Um, could you discuss the potential of using your lawn bot as a bolt on to existing robotic lawnmowers? Yeah, definitely. This is actually something that came up at my poster session yesterday. And um, I could, the soil moisture sensor element of my design, this part, can really be attached to any robotic lawn system that is already out there. So if you already have something that cuts your grass or monitors things in your lawn, you can attach just the soil moisture sensor part of it, um, which is really cheap because it is foam and nails right now. And so it would be a cheaper way to monitor your lawn. And yes, you wouldn't have to purchase the entire robot. That could be applicable to existing designs. Great job. How are you feeling? Good. That was excellent. I just love uh, the extra slides that they have hidden. Because as you asked, that was like, let me ask about these four criteria. And it's like, OK, really? Bam, there it is. 